great thing about joints like this, on like Rift Oak, it's just like you have this straight grain, so you yeah. see the transitions. They're pretty pronounced. Yeah. I think we can just get one straight there. Or? Up to here? I mean, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it'll stick the. Oh, let's move it this way so we get the thing. We're going to find out what it does. It's so close. I wish I could just get that last little bit, but it's hidden here. More of the gap with the clamps on it. I think we're going to have to live with that one. Which is, I think that's okay. Yeah, especially with the drawboard in there. You're looking down on that, you're not going to see it. Right. Yeah, the drawboard is going to hold it. So from here, do we mark it? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're good to mark it. There it goes. Did you want to do anything to the end of the tenon before we glue it? Or yes. can we do that after? Uh, it's long enough that we could do it after. Okay. It's just a chamfer. Cool. So, but it's also a lot easier to throw it in the vise and just zip, 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 zip. Yeah, we might do that. Yeah. Okay. We'll wait for Mark that out. So we just need to clamp up that one, Mark it. So real quick, I want to explain what a draw bore is. For those of you who are watching, you may have no idea what I'm doing right now. Uh, basically, you just saw us drill holes. Uh, it was a half inch hole in the mortise, in the leg of the joint. Um, and then we've assembled that tenon into the mortise and marked it with the drill bit. And that's just marking the tenon where we need to drill the hole. Now, we don't drill the hole exactly where we mark it. What we'll do is we'll take our dividers and we'll set these to a no more than a 16th depending on the size of your pin uh, the size of your joint sometimes just a 32nd of an inch and we'll step that hole over and then we'll drill the hole a 16th over from where we marked it and so that offsets the hole in the tenon so when you drive a peg through the leg it hits that offset and if you offset it in the right direction it pulls the joint together without clamps so hopefully that gives you a better idea how it works now we're going to jump back in and assemble this and you'll see how this joint gets pulled together just from the use of the oak dowel and then we'll have to clamp it before we put the draw bore in is that how we, we should decide have it to. Oh, okay it, it should we might uh, you know what since we had to pull it up right Man, I think the draw board will pull it. Yeah, because we had it clamped when we, I, I think when we will. positioned it, so it should pull it up there. Yeah. Let's put it, uh, let's move it towards you just a little bit so it's hanging in this hole. It always makes me super nervous. That looks amazing. Holy cow. Dude, flip it over. Let's see what the other side looks like. Yeah, that's pretty good. We might need one clamp there to kind of suck oh, it up. Oh, yeah. Not too bad, though. No. I don't really think it needs it. But it yeah, I don't. I think, the, I think they will. <laughs> Pretty good. Just a little bit. 
it's pretty amazing how well that works. Yeah. All right, so fast forward quite a bit. This table is actually done. You just saw us assemble the drawboard joint down here. Really cool joint, really pretty looking joint. It really came out nice. You got the through tenon. I love how this kind of seats up in here but notches into the leg. One thing that's different about this design than what we normally do is we generally will angle the shoulder of the tenon of the rail piece. But on this one, we decided to go 90 degree here and pocket it into the leg, which I think looks really cool. Nice look. Uh, something new, something unique, and obviously the through tenons are a really cool touch. So that's that all ready right now for finish. Um, we're going to put a sealer on this probably this afternoon. And same with the tabletop. It's got a round tabletop, and it'll get a sealer on it as well. And then we'll put a clear coat of conversion varnish, a very durable finish uh, that'll hold up well as a dining room table. I didn't do a full build video on this. I explained this in the last video. This is, I already have a build video on this table. It's called the McCurley table. This is a little bit different design variation of that table, but I'll link in the description, both that build video and you can go directly to my website and you can order this table. Um, I've shipped this table out of state. I've sold several of these and um, it's a cool design. So if you're interested in it, uh, all the info's in the description. Let's move on now to these guys. I got some explaining to do about my saw horses. All right, so I built a pair of saw horses about five years ago, did a YouTube video on it. It's gotten almost half a million views in that five years. And I titled the video, these are the best saw horses, period. I got a lot of heat for that. Now, obviously as a YouTuber, you gotta be creative in how you title videos. You gotta get people to watch your videos. I'm still standing behind that they are the best saw horses, period, for a furniture shop. The reason I'm telling you this is because after five years, they broke. Now it wasn't necessarily the lack of strength, it was the execution of the joinery that caused the issue. I did all the joinery completely by hand. I used hand tools to do it all. And the mortise and tenon joint, if there's a three mortise and tenon joint right here, and that failed. And it happened about five or six months ago. Um, it started, I started noticing they were loose and kind of wobbly and they're just completely unglued. And you can look at the, these are wedged through tenons. So the width of these, it's just a little bit too small, right? So I've got about a sixteenth of an inch gap there. So the wedges were really ineffective to begin with. Um, and I probably, as I can look at this, you can tell I didn't use a lot of glue as well. Like that is where the wood fibers have broken off, where they were glued from this piece. Um, and that's not a lot of good glue surface. Um, and a lot of the reason for that is, like I said, these were hand cut. The mortises were hand cut, so they're a little rough in there. It just shows that the um, the precision of joints is important. The glue surface is important, and getting your wedges dialed in correctly is important. Uh, so, you know, if I had done this and wedged this better, it probably would still be together, even with the lack of glue. So the fix for this, I've taken this one, I've taken both of them apart. This one I've cleaned up, done some sanding, I hand planed the top edge. Uh, I'm gonna clean this one up, and then we're gonna re-glue, I'm just gonna re-glue it with epoxy. Uh, which is a really strong adhesive. It fills any gaps really well. It should hold these no problem. Um, I'm thinking, I've actually been knocking around the idea of doing kind of like an ax handle, putting a saw kerf down the, down the width of this tenon and then wedging it that way as well. I don't think that would hurt. So I might try that out of one of them and see if I get more strength out of that particular sawhorse.
not the other way. It's a good start. Yeah, that's true. It's easier to fix that than the other way. Okay, so the saw horses are all fixed up. I didn't really worry about cutting things and cleaning them up. These are for the shop. They don't need to look pretty. They already look pretty rough because they've been used for the last five years. They are back to good. We've been using these now for a week. They are solid. Um, I do not believe that these are going to fall apart. I think that this was a really good fix, you know. Just really wedge that tenon out and locks it in there. And with all that epoxy in there, I think that the frame itself the wood would break before the joint would fail so i feel good about the fix like i said these are designed for a furniture shop these are not going to a construction site i stand behind my statement the best saw horses period for the furniture shop you know if you disagree leave me a comment let me know but um if you don't build them properly they might fall apart but if you do a good job on the joinery they'll hold up a really long time okay that's going to shut it down for this video real quick before i leave though i want to share with you guys the upcoming project. I'm super excited about this one. This is actually a really challenging build for us. It's a pretty fairly large conference table. You know, I talked a lot about that, you know, with this veneer table that we built was basically kind of for this conference table. And so we started that table this week. Uh, we got, you know, we didn't get super far along. There's just, a, this is a complicated build. And there was a lot of deliberation, a lot of planning, just a lot of thinking through things. But we got some of the base frames made here. It's got an oval pedestal base that tapers. And then we cut out a whole bunch of veneers. Um, the top has got a sunburst pattern. So I'll give you a little sneak peek at some of our veneers down here. So we've got 20, 22 of these we cut out. Um, all shot made off the bandsaw. These are a, probably a little heavy 32nd of an inch thick um, out of Texas pecan. So this is going to be really cool. So we're going to radial match these. So they're just pie sections. And as you put them together, it grows into a giant circle and uh it's gonna look incredible it's gonna look really cool and it is super challenging first time i've ever done this so out of my comfort zone a little bit but we got through cutting out the veneers we got through most of the base and there's a little bit more to the base too as well there's 180 of these little round pieces that go on the base it's got this kind of texture round over bull nose piece and like I said, there's a bunch of these. And Robert started today actually making these. And, you know, I'm kind of just stacking them up here. But that's kind of how they'll go together on the base. It'll give it a cool little look. I think it's going to be pretty neat. A whole lot of work in this one. I'm going to do a full build video on this. Maybe two-part build video. I don't know yet. I fully expect this build to take four to five weeks. So um, it's about all we're going to be working on. There's a few little things. I do have, as usual... I am way over committed until the end of the year. We've got to finish this conference table, build two small tables, and build one dining room table. So I'm be working hard. Plus, I'm starting a new YouTube series on my deck this in November. So it just doesn't stop. You just keep working hard. That's all you can do. Thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it, guys. I'm standing behind this statement. These are the best saw horses, period. But you can disagree if you want. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. I would appreciate it. As always, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.